Hi friends, today we start lecture 8 and in this lecture I am going to discuss the Bernoulli's equation specifically for compressible flow. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now in the previous class I talked about the isentropic flow equation and so essentially this equation has the form dp by p is minus cp by cv into dv by v. So here P was the pressure, V was the volume, and CP and CV are the specific heat values for constant pressure and constant volume respectively. Now this ratio CP by CV is denoted by the Greek letter gamma. Its value is 1.4 for air, and therefore we can write this nice equation which I have put in this yellow box. That's DP by P equals minus comma dV by V. So this equation is essentially known as the isentropic flow equation and from this you can obtain various relationships between P and V and P and T and P and rho and so on between any two points in the isentropic flow. So now if we want to do that we have to take a streamline and we have to take two points and then we have to integrate the equation between these two points. Now do remember that the flow here should satisfy the isentropic flow conditions which means that there should be no heat going in or coming out that means delta Q should be zero and also there should be no friction so this should be at some distance away from the airfoil section or the body so that these assumptions hold especially the friction one. So we take this equation dp by p is minus comma dv by v and we integrate it from points one to two. So we put pressure p1 and p2, we put volume v1 and v2 and so we are able to immediately integrate this equation. Remember from calculus the integral of dp by p is going to be log p and so this is going to become log p2 minus log p1 which is going to become log p2 by p1 where all these logs are to the base e the exponential base now once i obtain this equation i can bring this negative gamma here if i want to and raise it to the power i take both sides as exponential powers and so then i can obtain this equation here so this is p2 by p1 equals v2 by v1 to the power negative gamma. So this equation essentially lets us relate the pressures and volumes between two points 1 and 2 here in the air. So this is useful in many situations. Now let's look at density. So remember that we can write v1 as 1 by rho1 and v2 as 1 by rho 2 because we considered mass to be unit value in the system. So immediately if I plug these two equations in the previously derived equation here, I get this equation here. So what happens is that I get rho 2 by rho 1 and this negative gamma is flipped to gamma. So there is a change of sign because v1 was 1 by rho 1, v2 was 1 by rho 2. So I get this equation here and this equation essentially relates the pressure and density between two points in the isentropic flow. Now some people like to write this equation in this form here p by rho to the power gamma equals constant and some people and some textbooks even say that isentropic flow is defined in the condition where this particular equation holds. So that's something you can remember. Now what remains is temperature so now we are going to look at the flow relations which link pressure and temperature so for that we turn to the equation of state and we obviously know the equation of state is going to be valid at 1 it's going to be valid at 2 so I can take the rho values here and I can replace it with the p by rt value and if I do that then I plug this into this equation here I will get P2 by P1 equals T2 by T1 to the power gamma by gamma minus 1. Now do remember here that gamma value is 1.4 
so to do some of these calculations you would require a calculator in general so that's something to keep in mind if you are having an examination in this subject you need to make sure you take your scientific calculator now one important fact is of course that isentropic flow relations are only valid for compressible flow so that's something to keep in mind that do not use these equations for low speed flow which is incompressible so now i'm going to derive this bernoulli's equation for compressible flow but before that let us take a look at the bernoulli's equation for incompressible flow which we derived a few lectures before now that equation had the form p plus half rho v square equals constant now you are probably somebody who has seen this equation before even in your physics class or fluid mechanics class and this equation is derived from the Euler's equation which is given in this form dp plus rho v dv equal to zero so what we do is we integrate this Euler equations and we assume rho is constant in this integration because if rho is constant then I can take it out of the integral sign and I can write p plus half rho v square equals constant so Bernoulli's equation for incompressible flow is essentially an integrated form of this Euler equation. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to derive Bernoulli's equation for compressible flow. And here, we cannot use the fact that rho is constant because in compressible flow it is not. And therefore, now we use the isentropic condition that is P by rho to the power gamma equals some constant c. Now I immediately differentiate this equation so I get dp is c gamma rho gamma minus 1 d rho. So this comes to us straight away from calculus where we are differentiating rho to the power gamma. Now let's take a look again at the Euler equation. We had an expression for dp using this Euler's equation also. And so what I do is I take the dp value I obtained here and I put it inside the Euler equation. So I get this equation here. So if I take this Euler equation, I divide this throughout by rho, I would have a VDV term and this would be a dp by rho term. And so the dp by rho term, if I write this, I will get this equation here. So now I take this equation and I integrate it. So what happens is that the term v, now here remember small v is always velocity, becomes v square by 2. And here I have the term rho gamma minus 2. This becomes rho gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So these are again simple integration formulas which we can get in any calculus book. Now what we do is we take a look at c. And so c is p by rho to the power gamma. I put it in this equation here and so what happens is that I get this equation here so essentially what has happened is that this p by rho gamma has been absorbed into the different powers and exponents here and so p here remains but rho comes in here because there was a rho to the power gamma here there's a rho to the power gamma minus one here there is some cancellation and rho remains here so I get this equation so again we can think of this as an integrated form of the Euler equation but what has happened is that this isentropic flow condition has been used here and therefore I get this equation here now just for comparison let us take a look at the two Bernoulli's equations the top equation is the one which we encounter in incompressible flow the bottom one represents compressible flow and so you can see there is a small difference here the lower equation if we were to multiply throughout by density you would have some rho v square by 2 term here but this equation is quite different here so so i would say this fact that the gamma comes in here this is essentially where the thermodynamics of the system is entering here because gamma is coming from cp by cv and all those are essentially coming from the first law of thermodynamics so this is the equation for compressible flow now we'll 
get one more equation, but before getting that equation, we need some more insights into the different facts between the specific heat and the gas constant. So let's start with the definition of enthalpy. Now you remember H was E plus PV, E being the internal energy of the system, P is the pressure, V was the volume. So I can write H is CPT, E is CVT, and therefore plugging both these into the definition of enthalpy here, I get this equation, which I expand out, CPT is CVT plus PV, and I can immediately write this as CVT plus R. T. So that is essentially coming from PV equals RT. And then what I can do is if I just take this part and write it CPT equals CVT plus RT, there would be a cancellation of all these T's and I would get CP equals CV plus R. And then I get CP minus CV equals R. So that's something which is very interesting here. And we can see that there is a relationship between the specific heat at constant pressure, the specific heat at constant volume, and the gas constant value R. And again, here what I had used, the PV is RT, is nothing but P is rho RT, which is nothing but the equation of state. So essentially the equation of state, when combined with the basic definition of enthalpy, is giving me this relationship. So I'm going to use this relationship further. So CP minus CV is R. I divide this equation throughout by CP. I get this equation here. I invoke the fact that gamma is CP by CV. I get this equation here. And from this, I can write CP equals gamma R by gamma minus one. So we are going to use this to get a different form of the Bernoulli's equation. So let's now again start with the Bernoulli's equation. We had this equation here, and we can rewrite this equation in this form, because do remember one by rho equals capital V, because we are considering unit mass system. And once we get this equation, I can straight away write PV equals RT from the equation of state, and I get this equation here. Now I use the fact that gamma R by gamma minus one is CP. So that's something we derived on the left hand side. And once I plug that here, I get this very nice looking equation in this yellow box. That is CPT plus V squared by two equals constant. So this again is a form of the Bernoulli's equation. And now we have been able to relate temperature to the velocity in the isentropic flow. So this is sometimes also known as the energy equation for compressible flow. And so it has the form CPT plus V squared by two is constant. Value of CP for air is typically 1008 joule per kg Kelvin. So that's a value we can use. And this of course is very similar, or I would say identical to the Bernoulli's equation for compressible flow, which was gamma by gamma minus one. P by rho plus V squared by two equals constant. So depending on whether you need to find a relationship between temperature and velocity, then you need to use the first equation. If you need to find some relationships between pressure, density, and velocity, then you use the second equation. So the equation you use is actually dependent on the problem you are solving. So, we could actually have derived this equation completely from thermodynamics. So let's try to do that. Let's try to get the form of the first law of thermodynamics. Delta Q is dH minus VdP. Again, we invoke isentropic flow. In isentropic flow, you know, there is no heat going into the system or going out of the system. So Delta Q is zero. I put Delta Q is zero in the first law. I immediately get dH is VdP, and I can write it as dP by rho because V is one by rho. Now I take a look at the Euler equation. dP is negative rho V dV, and then what I do is I combine these two equations here. So I can immediately then write the equation dH plus VdV equals zero. So what I have done is I have taken dP by 
rho from the Euler equation and I have put it into the thermodynamics equation. So this is where our fluid meets our thermodynamics and so I get this nice looking equation here dH plus V dV equals zero. So remember H is enthalpy, V is velocity. And so I can integrate it between two points provided they are in isentropic flow and I get the equation H1 plus V1 square by two is equal to H2 plus V2 square by two. Immediately realizing that H is CPT, I can write the energy equation here. CPT1 plus half V1 square equals CPT2 plus half V2 square. So again, the same equation as before, kind of Bernoulli equation, but this is coming out totally from a merger of the first law of thermodynamics with the Euler or the momentum equation. So today's lecture was pretty intense. So you may have to go back and review it a couple of times before it all sinks into your brain. Now let us just summarize some of the things I discussed today. High speed flow is needed or requires thermodynamic laws. And this is happening because when you are slowing down air or you are speeding up air, you essentially are causing changes in temperature. So the density is also no longer constant. We also saw that the isentropic flow situation leads to Bernoulli's equation for compressible flow. And this equation should be used for high speed flow. Typically we can define it as speeds more than 100 meter per second for the air or the flight vehicle. And the energy equation relates velocity and temperature. Now, one mistake which students sometimes make is they try to use these equations at low speed. And that's not at all legitimate because again, those are incompressible flow situations. So don't use these isentropic flow equations at 30 meter per second or 10 meter per second or even 50 meter per second. You should use it in situations where flow velocities are reasonably higher than 100 meter per second. Now we are going to make some quantitative measures later about when to use these equations in terms of Mach number. Mach number is going to be something which is related to the speed of sound. And so that's something which plays a very important part in aerodynamics in demarcating the subsonic flow and the supersonic flow. So finally, before concluding, let us take a look at all the good looking equations we have derived today. So we started with the isentropic flow equation, which was P by rho gamma is constant. Some people even define isentropic flow as a flow, which essentially satisfies this equation. Also, we derived the Bernoulli's equation for compressible flow, which was gamma by gamma minus one, P by rho plus V square by two equals constant. Here P is pressure, rho is density, small v is velocity, gamma is the ratio of specific heats, that's 1.4. And also we had the energy equation, which is another form of the Bernoulli's equation. And that was CPT plus V square by two is constant, where T is the temperature, CP is the specific heat at constant pressure. And we also came up with a couple of equations relating CP, CV with R that was CP minus CV equals R, and also an equation which links CP gamma and R, so that CP equals gamma R by gamma minus one. These equations can come in handy every now and then because you may have access to one quantity and you may need to calculate a different quantity, so that's something to keep in mind. So that was today's lecture on the compressible Bernoulli's equation. Now, there are some situations where we need to use it. For example, if you are considering the flight of an aircraft which has propellers, and nowadays many aircraft again have propellers because drones are becoming popular and many of them actually use propellers. So what's going to happen is that sometimes the speed of air flowing through these propellers is pretty high. It is much more than 100 meter per second. And therefore, you need to use the compressible Bernoulli's equation in those cases. If you are dealing with helicopter rotors or you're dealing with wind turbine, you are quite safe in the incompressible flow regime because there the flow 
speed or the speed of wind is generally pretty small. So in the case of propeller flows, we can use compressible flow Bernoulli equation there. That's something maybe we'll make a video on that or you can check it out in Google and do some research in that area. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.